Knowing Rituals. This is a lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, for the Staging Citizenship module, which I would like my wonderful international students to watch before we meet on Thursday, uh, Thursday the 27th of, uh, of January 2022. Um, notice it's Thursday rather than Wednesday. <laughs> um, so last week we talked a little bit about um, performatives and it all seemed maybe a little bit weird to start off the um, semester with something quite so strange as a philosophical theory about language and you were very patient with me um, and allowed me to get away with just saying well because we need language and knowledge because we're teachers um, there is a lot more to the matter of how we know things and to the matter of performatives as uh, in their role as um, as firming up the way we communicate, um, but both it's important both for teachers, but also for um, citizens when we are living together. It's important um, that we that we understand each other. So we're going to um, look a little bit about how um, how performatives and more specifically uh, rituals, uh, so performatives in their bigger so social setting, um, how they firm up. Um, our knowledge of things, knowledge of the world, and our relationships with one another. So we're going to look at three different functions of rituals, each of them um, having a particular role in knowledge. So the first one is um, constituting something at all. Um, as the great Taylor Swift once said, words can break someone into a million pieces, but they can also put them back together. Uh, philosophers very often talk about constituting things, that words that constitute things. And what, what they mean by that is um, by using words in particular ways or rituals or forms of life, um, when, we, uh, uh, when we use them in particular ways, we all agree or we end up understanding something in a similar way. Now, as you can see here, um, I am drinking a cup of tea and it's quite important for me as an English person to, um, to come to an agreement about what good tea is. Uh, this was not good tea, um, and and so I'm going to have to have a word with my children, um, and this is this is something to do with our expectations. Um, you can imagine a much worse problem would be if I'd asked for a cup of tea, and my daughter brought me a goat, uh, which hasn't happened so far, but I wouldn't put it past her. Um, Recognising things isn't always easy, and we use our words in order to do this. Um, it's, um, it's actually not simply the case that we already recognize things and then we have to put words to it. In actual fact, once you've learned, uh, learned to use a word, you're better at identifying things in the world. And that's why we teach particular words sometimes. And that's why we teach particular ter terminology, not so that people can show off by using long words, but so that they can then use those words, take them into the world and understand things better and, um, and continue a conversation about them. Rituals, of course, do this, and, and some of them are really obviously um, uh, obvious ways of doing this. So, for example, when somebody launches a ship, I name this the Princess Gunhild and smashes a big champagne bottle onto the side of the ship. Um, but it's also um, an important part of uh, rituals in general. For example, the, the climax of, um, of many um, wedding um, rituals are, I now pronounce you man and wife. Um, and from then on, it's important that we can use these words and we couldn't use those words. And it would be a source of great embarrassment um, if we'd said, is this your wife or is this your girlfriend? And it turns out they're on a first date or something. And rituals are very good at avoiding that kind of embarrassing situation. And that's why it's also important in some traditions to at the beginning of the reception that um, that we get to use these words. And sometimes people will make a great deal out of saying, oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. something or other. And, um, and traditionally, the, um, the bridegroom starts his, um, his speech by saying, my wife and I. Recently, one of my friends got ordained. Uh, and the next, the first time I, I met him, um, I, I said, hello, Father Kirk, um, because I wanted to use the, the, the phrase that, we, that I could not use until his until that ritual had taken place. So rituals allow us to um, use particular words and they also allow us to use those words to understand the world and to negotiate the world forward. So so it's not simply a matter of understanding things. We might understanding. I, I didn't add to my understanding um, the, under, the understanding of priesthood when, when my friend Kirk ordained, but I did add one more person um, who, was, um, who would go into that group. And of course, he can influence my understanding of that in the future. So 
lots of rituals also, since we're um, first talking about putting words onto the world, so now Kirk is a um, father Kirk, um, other people are man and wife, Mr. and Mrs. and so on, all of these titles that can be used. There are legal functions, there are um, legal functions that go with that. So if you are, if it turns out that you are man and wife, um, then you have certain rights concerning inheritance and, um, and the care of children. Uh, which don't apply to other people. So there are legal consequences of the, uh, of the words we use. And this is true of a lot of, um, of, of um, legal um, processes in general, that they, um, they need to um, fasten words onto the world. Um, that is why in a court case, uh, we need to establish whether, we need some experts in order to establish whether um, person X was actually free at the time or was actually an adult at the time. Uh, and a lot of um, um, rituals will therefore be used to identify the legal functions that we all really need to know about in order to apply legal processes. Um, how the way we approach a child with their parent is very different from the way we, we approach a child and an adult in general. There is less suspicion, but we need to uh, know as a public um, who is applied to which children in order to, um, in order to behave in, in particular ways. Um, and, um, and, and, so legal, and so there are lots of rituals to, um, to make that um, transition um, open and public and set in stone so that the legal functions can work later. You can't get divorced unless you've been married, for example. Um, and, and, and therefore, it is very often you will see in many cultures, there are legal, uh, no, there are ritual um, functions um, for when somebody comes of age, because that will have consequences for how responsible they are for their actions. Um, parents wash their hands of their children when they come of age. I'm looking forward to doing so in three years' time. Um, and um, and similarly, um, and, and similarly, uh, marriage, as we've already talked about, um, but also um, other, uh, any other role in which a responsibility is, um, is attached, we will see a ritual. Kings, queens, um, swearing in a jury. Um, you change your role, you change your responsibility, and therefore we need a ritual so that everyone knows when it's happened. At this time, at 10 o'clock, he was not the king, at 11 o'clock he was. At 10 o'clock, I became a jury member. At 9 o'clock, I was not. I don't. I can talk in different ways at 9 o'clock, but at 10 o'clock, I became a member of the jury because of this ritual. And although we would distinguish between academic um, and religious and legal rituals, um, it, that is not a, a universal, an anthropological universal. In antiquity, for example, the Roman documents, um, and um, and we, we can read up about these in the work of uh, Cicero, the famous um, rhetor um, and politician, um, that the religious and legal and political rituals, um, they were all intimately mixed. And it's only um, in, in particular situations and particular histories that we've, um, we've distinguished very clearly between these different spheres and indeed have wanted to distinguish between them. Okay, so that was the legal things. And notice that there are rituals that became that make things public, but very often in modern rituals, um, the public nature of the ritual is accompanied by documentation. So we've got this meaning, um, a community meaning, we've got legal consequences, and then we've got paper. Um, for example, um, at, um, at, at situations when somebody is celebrating their name, very often they will get a document, a name, a test, or, or a ritual um, handing over of the um, of the birth certificate or something like a birth certificate, a baptism certificate in in um, in Christian uh, rituals, and um, similarly in weddings, very often somebody will um, hand over. And in in certainly in England, where I come from, there is a big gap in the middle of the um, marriage ceremony when everybody signs under the um, the correct documentation. Uh, more recently, I have uh, become a Norwegian citizen um, and um, and changed my flight from the um, from the British to the British and Norwegian. Um, but it is true that um, if you if you are um, swearing, if you're taking part in a ritual, and sometimes in a, in America, for example, people swear allegiance to the flag, and this kind of ritual will then uh, release in this kind of document. You know, so so there are particular things you say to particular people. 
that um, allow documentation. That means that we can write about the world, we can describe the world. Rituals are ways of, um, of dividing up this soup that is the world that comes towards us in an indistinguished way that we don't have words for, that we don't really understand, we can't distinguish between. Uh, and it gives us words and distinctions and behaviors um, that allow us to not bump into things. Um, and, and, that, and that is where it becomes educationally important because children should understand the world. But from what I've been saying, um, legal processes, political documentation, relational situations and, and community relations, um, all of these are really important for navigating the public sphere as a human being, but as a document in a modern society as a human being, but uh, as, as a citizen in a modern society, not a document. You are not documents, you are more than your documents, and you are more than, more than your legal definitions as well. So when we look at documents, and we when we look at the rituals that go with them, and when we look at the meanings that go with them, we can see all of these things interlocking, constituting understandings of the world, um, identifying and enabling legal processes and functions, and um, making documentation so that we can then check them afterwards. Uh, and hopefully we can identify these three different functions in, in, in different rituals and, um, and practice making this kind of application and this kind of analysis in the class. I very much look forward to seeing you there.